It looks like right now, I think it's just you and I. It says two participants, which should be you and I. So hopefully in the next couple minutes, people will filter in. Are you in Florida? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. The sunshine state. <laughs> it's been nice and warm. Sometimes recruiters are, you know, located in the state they recruit in or, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that does, um, it's really convenient for some people. I actually grew up here, so it's been nice to be home and kind of experiencing my hometown from an adult perspective, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I do miss traveling right now, though. Yeah, thank goodness, right? Thank goodness mm -hmm. we don't have to do much traveling. Because uh, yeah. yeah, that would be difficult. It would be difficult, but I do miss like fall, getting to see it, all the leaves change and everything like that, because we don't quite get that here. I mean, we do have maple trees, so those trees do change, but it doesn't have quite the same effect <laughs> when it's 80 degrees outside. <laughs> and we have a beautiful fall in the middle. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Today is picture perfect. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's one of those crisp fall days in the 70s, maybe like, let's see, let me tell you what the temperature is here. Upper 70s or low 80s, I think. Dang. Uh, let's see here. Seventy-five and sunny. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so by my clock, it's just now five thirty. So. Facilitator training, not that this would necessarily happen, um, but if, if attendees who register don't show up, um, the best thing to do is to go ahead and leave the webinar open for a while, um, and I'll leave the welcome slide up, and then if you see somebody pop in, you can go ahead and start it, start it if you feel, you know, there's enough time. Um, and uh, because sometimes people sign up for things and then don't show. So, but they, you know, they said leave it open for a little while in case someone shows up late or what have you. So I yeah, I'd be happy to wait a couple minutes and then I'll go ahead and start. I mean, I know this is being recorded and putting on the website, so. Yeah. Cool. That's true. You can do your presentation even if there's not anyone there because it is recorded. You're right. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. So this, this slide has already been on the, um, you know, open to the uh, attendees. So if anyone's viewing this later, I'm sure they're seeing it that they, you know, if they, they aren't going to be able to ask questions if they're viewing it late and um, they're, you know, so I'll just go ahead and get out of your way and let you start because most of this stuff applies to live attendees. It doesn't really matter after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dina. Thank you. All right. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Saavedra, and I am the undergraduate admissions counselor here at Florida Southern College. Um, I work with students from all over the Midwest, including Illinois, um, and I'm so happy to be here and talking with you all today. Um, just some brief information about Florida Southern. We were founded in 1883, which actually makes us one of the oldest private colleges in the state of Florida. Um, we do have around 3,000 total students, 60% of which are from the state of Florida and 40% of which are from out of state, representing nearly 50 states and 50 foreign countries as well. Um, Florida Southern College is located in Lakeland, Florida, which is pretty much exactly halfway between Tampa and Orlando. It's about an hour in between both cities, an hour and a half in between both coasts. So it's a pretty sweet spot to be in in Florida for sure. 
Just another fun fact about Florida Southern, we are actually considered a National Historic Landmark for having the largest single site collection of Frank Lloyd Wright structures, which is really exciting. Um, and the most popular structure that you um, can find on campus is actually in this picture below. Um, it is the Annie Pfeiffer Chapel. Um, it's super awesome. We have 12 buildings and one water dome. Um, so we actually have a lot of uh, people come from all over the country to see the Frank Lloyd Wright structures as well. And it is definitely nice to have that piece of history here on campus too. In terms of academics, Florida Southern does offer over 70 academic programs. Um, and this does include 16 pre-professional tracks if you're interested in doing something like medical school, law school, dental school, physical therapy, occupational therapy, different things like that. These 70 programs of study do run across our five different uh, our schools, which include the Barney Barnett School of Business, the School of Health and Nursing, the School of Physical Therapy and Exercise Science, the School of Education, and the School of Arts and Sciences as well. Our most popular majors by far are our marine and uh, marine biology and biology programs, our business program education, our direct entry nursing program, and our fine arts programs, specifically theater and musical theater. If you do want to get your master's degree, we do have several different options here on campus as well. Um, we have 11 master's and doctoral level programs on campus, and we also have partnership programs with the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine and Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri for an engineering program too. Including in those 11 master's and doctoral level programs that we have on campus, we do have several different four plus one accelerated options. So that way you can get a head start and graduate with your bachelor's degree and your master's degree in five years. And those degrees are the master's of accountancy, master's of business administration and um, master's of education. We are adding a master's of industrial organizational psychology within the next couple of years, and that will be a four plus one accelerated option as well. Regardless of what you major in, you are going to be an active participant in your field of study. Um, we try to limit the amount of time that you sit in the classroom and get talked at because A, that's super boring and B, that's not exactly how people learn. Um, so we do try to keep you engaged and immersed in your field as soon as possible because we do have that um, engaged learning philosophy and really do believe in the power of learning by doing. We're able to offer this engaged learning experience in part because of our small class size. With 3,000 students on campus, our average class size is 18, and our student to faculty ratio is 14 to 1. Your professors are the only people that teach your classes. So you're never going to be taught by a graduate student or a teaching assistant. And this is just to ensure that you're learning from experts in your field at all times. Um, and your uh, faculty members do act as your academic advisors outside of the classroom as well. Um, some of my most favorite um, ex examples of engaged learning are located on these slides. So in the top left hand corner, you'll see a student taking part in our Tiny Earth Network. Um, and this is a network of schools that all first year biology students um, do research for, and it's antibiotic resistance research. So our students go out into the community, they buy on soil samples, bring them back to campus, and look for antibiotic properties within those soil samples. And this is a specific lab class that happens either your first semester or your second semester within your first year. Um, this is super awesome because over the past couple of years, our students have found over 250 new antibiotic properties um, and they were able to publish papers, um, give their samples to other institutions to, to look at them again. Um, they are able to give uh, presentations at conferences. So a lot of really cool opportunities come out of this required course for our biology students. We also have a CBS affiliate station located right on campus for communication students. Um, that's really awesome to get some um, professional experience both behind the camera and in front of the camera as well. Um, and our nursing program is super hands on. You can't really do nursing without being hands on. Um, like I said, it's a direct entry nursing program. So it is a four year program. And we do have a business completely dedicated to nursing um, here on campus as well. And this building has a bunch of mannequins. They talk, they bleed, they vomit, they go into cardiac arrest. Uh, one gives birth, which is kind of gross, but if you're a nursing student, you're going to have to see it eventually, so you might as well see it on a mannequin first. Um, and this way you get to um, practice on your mannequins before you go out on clinical rotations and, and start working with real patients. And if you do want an extra academic challenge here at Florida Southern, we do have a really wonderful honors program. Um, we do have some additional requirements in order to apply for the honors program, and you do have to submit a separate application for the honors program, um, but perks for this um, honors 
program include priority registration for classes and housing assignments, doing a capstone research project with a professor in your junior or senior year. Um, and also you get letters of recommendation for different jobs or different graduate programs that you'd be applying for after graduation. Um, the application for the honors program is open now and it's due by March 1st at the latest. As kind of an extension of our engaged learning philosophy, we do have these three guarantees for all of our students, regardless of major. And whether you take advantage of these opportunities or not is totally up to you. Um, and these guarantees are to do a travel study option, to participate in a professional internship or some kind of professional working experience, um, and graduate in four years or less. Um, so that travel study um, option is super awesome. It's the first guarantee that I want to highlight. Um, so this we kind of guarantee through a, different, a couple different ways. So uh, the most popular way that we guarantee this is through our junior journey program. So this is a seven to 10 day trip during the, the, the school breaks in either your junior or senior year. You do go with a professor, so it does have some kind of academic component to it. Um, and you do receive course credit for it as well. You also get to do some fun things on the side though, so don't worry. Um, the best part about these trips though is that they are at little to no additional cost to our students whatsoever. And our students have gone all over the place um, to like Spain, Italy, France, um, <clears throat> England, South Africa, um, Australia, New Zealand, the Grand Cayman Islands, Bimini, Alaska, DC, New York. Um, so we do have domestic options and international options as well. Um, whatever your comfort level is or whatever your program is going on, um, you have tons of different options for those trips. Um, the other really great thing about these trips is that since they don't take any time out of your class schedule, you do have the option to go on trips that are outside of your major, which is super awesome as well. Um, and if seven to 10 days isn't enough time for you, uh, we we do have a May option called a Maymester, and this is typically three or four weeks um, traveling and doing some schoolwork as well. And then we also have your more traditional semester long options too. Um, we specifically have partnership programs in Spain, um, England at the Carl College of Harlexton, as well as a school in Switzerland too. The next guarantee that I want to highlight is that participating in a professional internship, because this is more important now than ever, especially since 95% of employers are looking for new hires with experience. Um, and internships or some kind of professional working experience does really go a long way in making your application as competitive as possible for these jobs and graduate programs as well. Um, internships at Florida Southern can look a lot of different ways, depending on what your major is and what your career goals are. Um, we do require uh, internships for some majors as graduation requirements. Um, but regardless of your major and whether it's a requirement or not, you are guaranteed some kind of professional work experience. If you are in a business program, your internship is going to look a lot like you would think when you think of internships, like you see movies, different things like that, but that might not be your goal. So we do have options for you to do shadowing hours as your internship. Um, we have volunteer experiences that count for internship credits. You can do research on campus or at another institution as an inter as an internship. Basically, anything that's going to really look great on your resume and help you get to where you're going can be counted as an internship here at Florida Southern. Um, we do allow students to to get internships over this. Uh, the semester um, by staying locally, um, but if you over school breaks, if you want to go back home or explore somewhere new, you're more than welcome to get internships elsewhere as well. And we do have three branches of our career resource center. So the general office of career and continuing education, um, we have a branch within the business department and a STEM and pre-professional development center right on campus. So all of these um, offices have resources for you to be able to find those internship experiences and having those three branches and a decentralized model to our career resource center really gives you the opportunity to get the specialized help and attention that you do need. Um, finally, we do have the guarantee that you will graduate in four years or less. And I know this sounds pretty self-explanatory because a four-year degree should obviously take no more than four years. 
Um, but research is showing that it is taking students five to six years to graduate with their bachelor's degree. And that's no problem if you need that extra time. But if you don't need that extra time and you're just delayed in your graduation, it could end up costing you up to 40% more in your college education. And that's on the burden that we want to have to put on our students. Um, so we do have this guarantee that you'll graduate in four years or less. And we're able to guarantee this because of our excellent advising system here at Florida Southern. Um, like I mentioned earlier, your professors do act as your academic advisors and they're typically professors that you've had in classes so they already know you um, and they're able to get to know you even more, um, teach you in the classroom and then mentor you outside of the classroom. You meet with them several times per year so that you can make sure that you're on track as possible. And they even have um, different resources to find internships and research opportunities outside of campus as well. We also are very transfer credit friendly. So we take all sorts of AP credits, IB, ACE, dual enrollment. Um, so pretty much all of those <clears throat> typically for AP, um, classes we're looking for a three or above on that exam, although some courses do require a four or above. Um, we also do require a four or above on the IB um, exams, a C or above on ACE, and then dual enrollment is a C or above in the class as long as it is taken at an accredited college. Um, so you can potentially come to Florida Southern with some college credits already under your belt, uh, which is super helpful in getting some of those general education requirement courses out of the way. <clears throat> Now, kind of in terms of why all of this is important, um, it is important because it does translate into post-graduation success. Um, I did mention, uh, mean to mention on the previous slide that 90% of our students who do graduate do so in three, uh, four years or less, um, which is super awesome because you can get started on that post-graduation post success either on time or early. Um, and in terms of our students, 97% of our graduates um, are employed or in graduate school within a year after graduation, um, which is a super awesome success rate. And you can see some logos beneath um, on this slide of um, some examples of institutions and employers that our students have joined after graduation. Um, just some highlighting examples on the bottom right hand corner is Sophie Morgan. She graduated with the class of 2018. She is a marine biology major from Georgia and she was able to go back home to Atlanta and now she works as a beluga whale birthing nurse um, and a penguin trainer at the Georgia Aquarium. Um, also kind of on that row, but to the left is Natalie Burton. She was actually our senior class president um, or student government president in her um, senior year. She's from Florida. She um, was a nursing major and now works at Palm Bay Hospital, um, but she was able to do her internship in the Philippines and work as a birthing nurse for a summer. So our graduates are doing lots of really wonderful or things um, around the country, around the world, um, and our alumni network is really robust. So wherever you end up after graduation, you know you're gonna have some sort of Southern connections as well. Now I know that academics and um, outcomes are obviously a really important part of your college search process. Uh, but I also wanna take a moment and highlight some student life aspects of Florida Southern because we do pride ourselves on being a true campus residential community. Um, in terms of housing, you are guaranteed housing for all four years. It's kind of our unofficial fourth guarantee. Um, and that's just because we do require students to live on campus for all four years, unless you live within a 30 mile radius with a parent or legal guardian. Um, but this is something that our students love because it really does create a community on campus and something that you feel connected to, which is something that's really important with out of state students like yourselves, um, because you are looking for a home for four years, not a place that's going to be empty on the weekends and there's always a ton of things to do at Florida Southern on the weekends and 93% of our students choose to live on campus, even if they live close by um, and most students don't go home for the weekend. So there's always people on campus, always something to do, which I think is really nice. Now, just because we have that four year guarantee um, and requirement to live on campus, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be living in a dorm for all four years. Um, we do have those residential options for our first year students, um, including Nicholas and Wesley, which are co ed by four and overlook the lake, their suite style, which is super nice, only three people sharing a bathroom. Um, and then we have Joseph Reynolds Hall and Dell Hall, which are all female. Um, they're more community style, so probably have eight to 10 girls sharing a bathroom. And then Alan Spivey is our all male hall, and that works 
the same way as Joseph Reynolds Hall and Dell Hall and that it's community style as well. Um, after that, we do have some dorm options for upperclassmen, including our Greek suites, if Greek life is something that you're interested in getting involved with. Um, and then we also own several different apartment complexes off campus. All of these apartment complexes are within a mile radius of campus. There are shuttles that go back and forth, so you don't feel like you need to worry about walking or riding a bike or parking on campus. Um, we also have police officers that live in patrol there 24 seven, and you have access to RAs just like you would in an on-campus dorm too. Um, the only difference is that they are apartments and they're a little bit more off campus. So it gives you a little bit more freedom and independence and you're a living in situation as well. Outside of um, our residence options, we do have a ton of resources and, and food options available on campus. So you have everything that you need, um, including a Starbucks coffee area, um, a steak and shake on campus, and of course had deli, which is super exciting. We also have a couple of food trucks that have stocked up for the Southern, and we have a farmer's market every second Wednesday of the month as well. In terms of um, athletics on campus, uh, we are NCAA Division II, and we are the Florida Southern Moccasins, and that is the snake, not the shoe. Um, the shoe would not be a very intimidating um, mascot whatsoever. <laughs> um, but we do have 20 NCAA Division II teams and 30 national championships among them all. Um, these uh, teams range anywhere from basketball and volleyball to lacrosse and baseball to track and cross country. Um, yeah, so tons of different sports options for you all to either play in or show your school spirit in. And if you are looking to get recruited, um, I highly recommend uh, filling out our prospective student athlete questionnaire as well, because that is the best way to get in touch with the coaches too. Um, if you're looking for some club sports, we do have those options as well. Um, we have five club sports, which are water skiing, equestrian, ice hockey, esports, and cheerleading. Um, and then if you are looking to get involved in sports, but not quite at the club or D2 level, we do have a really wonderful intramural program that runs out of the wellness center here on campus. And about half of our student body population does participate in intramurals of some kind. Uh, we try to do some rotating ones, um, but we do typically have our, our more popular programs like kickball and uh, black football, basketball, um, kickball, different things like that. Um, but we also do some rotating fun ones. So um, we've done inner tube water polo, pickleball is really popular out of that option. Um, a couple years ago, we did a Mario Kart tournament where um, we, like it wasn't on the screen though, we, we built out a track um, and had scooters and dodgeballs as the, the red turtles. Um, so it was a lot of fun for our students, um, something to get involved with that is competitive, but also has a, a very silly fun side to it as well. Um, if you're not very athletic, but still looking to get involved in intramurals, we do have like trivia tournaments, rock, paper, scissors tournaments, cornhole tournaments. We've even done some Madden tournaments as well. Um, so there are a ton of options to get involved and meet new people on campus too. Outside of athletics, we do have over 100 student clubs and organizations here on campus. And those range anywhere from, um, oh goodness, Honor societies for the different majors to more special interest clubs and organizations too. Um, so we do have um, Greek life on campus as well. So there are six sororities and seven fraternities. Um, about 30% of our student body population does get involved in Greek life. So it is it does have a presence on campus, but it isn't an overwhelming majority. Um, so you don't need to feel pressured to get involved with that if you don't want to, uh, but the option is always there for sure. Um, we also are United Methodist affiliated, but it is in no way, shape, or form a requirement for you to either be Methodist to attend Florida Southern or uh, participate in church services or religion courses if you don't want to. Uh, but we do have several different options for you if you would like to grow in your faith on campus. Um, we do have non-denominational church services and Catholic Mass every Sunday as well, and we do have 10 campus ministries including a Catholic ministry, a Jewish Hallel, several different student-led worship groups and some Bible study groups and service groups too. Um, we're really fortunate to be in Lakeland because Lakeland is a very philanthropic place. Um, it's full of 
you know, entrepreneurs and community members who are constantly trying to give back. Um, and they welcome our students in those efforts to give back. So we do have several different service ministries, like I said, but a lot of organizations do community service on the side as a way to give back to our community. And last year, our students completed 32,000 hours of community service, which is not something that was required of them. It was just something that they wanted to do because they wanted to. Um, and I think that says a little, a lot about our students on campus and about what Florida Southern really values. Um, we do have a cornerstone, which is essentially like the honor code for our students. And it does really kind of hone in on being welcoming and accepting people, regardless of their ideas and opinions and their backgrounds. Um, and it does emphasize giving back as well. And again, I think our students really embody that cornerstone. Now that I've shared a lot of general information about Florida Southern, um, let's take a moment and kind of talk about how to become a Florida Southern Moccasin. Um, so first and foremost, I mean, it is 100% totally free to apply regardless of how you do so. And our application is available on our website, which is flsouthern.edu. Um, and we're also available on the Common Application and Coalition as well. Um, and in addition to your application, we do need your high school transcripts complete through your junior year, um, your letter of recommendation and a personal essay. And that personal statement is included in our application and common application. Um, Coalition is the only one that you might have to submit something separately for. Um, but we are test optional this year and plan to be test optional for the indefinite future. Um, which basically means that if you have test scores, you're more than welcome to send them. But if you're not happy with your test scores, or I know things have been really weird this year, so you haven't had a chance to take a test yet, um, you don't have to submit test scores in order to be considered for both admission or scholarships. Um, we're very flexible with this policy, so if you want to go back and forth um, based on what's going to help you the most, um, we can definitely have that conversation for sure. Um, but once we receive all these items, it should take somewhere between three to six weeks to get you a decision back because we are on rolling admission. Um, we also do have three different application options. Um, so the first option would be to apply early action um, or early decision. All of those materials are due by November 1st. Um, basically, the only difference between the two is that early action or early decision is binding. Um, so that means that you have to sign a separate paper. And if you're accepted to Florida Southern under that early decision option, um, you'd have to submit a non-refundable enrollment deposit by uh, January 15th. Um, whereas early action, you get until uh, May 1st to make your decision and your enrollment deposit is refundable until May 1st as well. Um, we also have just regular decision and all of those application materials are due by May for, uh, March 1st. And it works very similarly to early action where it's non-binding and you have until May 1st and your enrollment deposit would be refundable until May 1st as well. We are very holistic in our application review approach, which is why we do ask for that letter of recommendation and that personal essay, it's because we want to take the time to get to know you outside of your GPA and test scores because there's often a lot more to the story than just your GPA and test scores. Um, that being said, if you do kind of want an academic ideal where our students have stood in the past, um, our incoming freshman class had a 3.82 weighted GPA on average. So that was weighted and recalculated and weighted for um, dual enrollment, AP, IB, ACE, all that good stuff. Um, our students also had an 1130 to a 1300 in between, um, or a 23 to a 29 on the ACT. Um, we had about 10,000 applications last year and accepted a little bit over 50%. Um, again, these are just averages, so we do accept students below, above and below those scores as well. And just a reminder again that Florida Southern is test optional, so you don't have to submit your, your test scores this year. In terms of scholarships, we have a ton of different options, and I know that this can really be the most important part of your college search process is that financial aid component to it. Um, when you apply to Florida Southern, you're automatically considered for scholarships based off of your GPA and test scores. Um, if you do choose to submit your test scores, again, at the very least, it'll just be based off of your GPA. Um, and last year, those scholarships ran anywhere from $7,000 to $21,000 each year, which can potentially be a really big chunk of change. Um, also, we have some talent scholarships available. So if you are getting recruited for a sport, um, if you have a major where you have to submit a portfolio um, or do an interview, um, or you can audition for the music department or an ensemble and be considered for scholarship that way as well. Um, basically, anything that you have to do something separate for, you could be um, 
award of a talent scholarship that would stack on top of your academic based scholarship too. Um, we also do have a prestige and premier scholarship program. Um, so at the very least, this is an additional scholarship um, of, of a various amount that stacks on top of your academic case scholarship, but it could potentially also be full tuition and fees and full ride scholarships as well. Um, these do have some higher eligibility requirements and we'll let you know if you're eligible for those uh, for that program. Um, and it does require a separate application and interview process as well. Um, on top of that, though, we are an aid stacking institution. Um, so anything that you receive from the federal government by submitting the FAFSA, which did just open on October 1st, um, it's not required for you to submit the FAFSA, but I definitely suggest it for at least the first year because you never know what you might be eligible for in terms of federal, state, or additional aid. Um, so anything that you get through the federal government through FAFSA, and you find scholarships online or through community organizations in your area, um, basically anything that isn't from Florida Southern or another institution, um, we're able to accept those and stack them on top of your academic based scholarship, um, as long as there aren't any stipulations as to how you can use those scholarships. Um, we can also accept um, college savings plans, so definitely check with your family to see if you have any kind of those and, and military benefits as well. So 99% um, of our students do uh, receive scholarships and financial aid of some kind, uh, but typically somewhere between 95% and 97% of those scholarships and financial aid comes directly from Florida Southern, which I think says a lot about the investment that we make in our students' education. So that's pretty much all the general information that I have for you guys about Florida Southern. Um, but I definitely, if you want to explore a little bit more, um, we have several different options. So Florida Southern is currently open for in-person tours. Um, we have three tour times, so Monday through Friday, 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. In October and November, we'll also be doing a couple of Saturday and Sunday tours, so definitely check out our website if you're interested in doing that. Um, we will be requiring some COVID screening questions, as well as um, wearing masks throughout the entire tour, even outside. And we do have capacity limits, so if you're wanting to come down to campus and kind of visit and explore Florida Southern, I definitely suggest planning your trip in advance just to make sure that you don't hit that capacity level for those tours. Um, but other than that, we're happy to have you guys on campus. Um, but if you're unable or not comfortable coming to campus, I also totally understand that. And you visit flsouthern.edu slash experience FSC, um, you will find a ton of virtual options to explore Florida Southern, including a virtual tour. Um, we're also hosting mock talk webinars. Um, so these are going to be a very different uh, topic. So I believe in a couple of days we're having a mock talk specifically about um, financial aid and submitting that FAFSA like I talked about. Um, we also have some different majors, um, faculty members from different majors presenting about the programs at Florida Southern and what to expect for four years. Um, so lots of really cool options for you. Um, we'll also be hosting a virtual day on campus on Saturday, November 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. So that'll be 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Central time. Um, and that's a really, really awesome option. I definitely I recommend that because it's going to give you the most in-depth look at Florida Southern. It'll start with an overview much like this one. And then we'll go into different Zoom rooms where you can meet with professors in your field of study. Again, hear about what to expect at Florida Southern in that major for, for four years. Um, then there's also like um, Dr. Lauren Albaum, who runs the STEM and Professional Development Center. Um, she'll be hosting some information sessions about pre-health professions and, and the resources we have for students on campus in that respect. Um, we'll also have a student life expo. There will be a student panel so you can connect with current students on campus. And some of our student tour guides called Southern Ambassadors will also be taking you on a Zoom tour of campus. Um, so we just had our first one on September 26th and it went super well. Um, you can also uh, register for this November uh, program on our website through flsouthern.edu slash experience. Again, that's now officially all the information that I have for you guys. Um, thank you so much for uh, um, stopping by today. Um, if you have any questions, this is my contact information. Like I said, I'm the admissions counselor for Illinois, um, and I am pretty much your um, best friend throughout this process. Um, I'm here to help through the application process. I'll be your financial aid counselor. Um, pretty much here for you every step of the way. So please don't hesitate to reach out if there's anything I can help with. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Can you do me a favor and unshare for a second so I can share my last slide there?
Thank you so much. Um, so thank you for attending this session. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple more pieces of information. Um, after you close the session, there will be a quick survey that will pop up. It's only four questions. We'd really value your feedback. And then if you want to check out more sessions, which there are uh, numerous available, they're on the IACAC website at www.iacac.org. And a recording of the session is going to be posted to the website. You should have, expect to have it within a few days to a week or so. So once again, thank you so much for coming. And thank you, Anna, for sharing all that great information. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.